Hello everyone, I'm Brooke Tobias. I'm with Tulare County Office of Education and today's lesson or breakout session is going to be focusing on understanding yourself in a leadership role. Before moving forward with this presentation, I did want to let teachers know that at the end of this presentation, there are three different links with an assigned QR code that you can scan or you can utilize the link to access three separate resources that we will be referencing throughout this presentation. Throughout this presentation, we will be doing three different activities. So if you would like your students to have a physical copy in hand to be able to work through those activities, go ahead and access those resources now. So the topics that we'll be going over today include your support system and your inspirations, along with a self-reflection on your leadership traits, along with the process of making decisions. The first activity that we're going to start with is discussing who you would like to be sitting at your table. And I'm not talking about the dinner table. I'm talking about your table of inspiration. As you're thinking about this, I want you to reflect on your role models or the people that you might aspire to be or who you look to for guidance. This can include anyone who is living, maybe they have passed away, or even a pet. If anyone or anything that has had a great influence in your life or that has taught you a valuable lesson. The reason why we're doing this activity is for you to take a moment to reflect on who you're surrounding yourself with. It's important for leaders to have great mentors to support your process in moving forward as you're trying to reach your goal. For example, I would definitely have my mother sitting at my table because she was the first one to instill in me the golden rule. She's always taught me to treat others the way that I want to be treated. Now that we've taken the time to reflect on who is supporting us and who we look to for inspiration and guiding us to reach our goals, I now wanna take a moment for you to self-reflect on your own traits as a leader. In just a moment, we'll have a page that's gonna ask you some questions in regard to your leadership traits. And the goal is to improve your skills as a leader. So try your best to be as honest as you can with yourself when you answer the following questions. Regardless of your age or your leadership role or ranking, everyone needs to ask for support sometimes, especially when times get challenging. If you're aware of the areas that you need support in, your teachers or peers will be able to help you strengthen that area. As you can see on your screen, these are some of the traits of a leader that we are going to be reflecting on today. The first one you see there is enthusiasm. So this is asking, do you have energy or a positive attitude? Are you motivated? Right next to that, you'll see you'll have four different categories to choose from. The first one is you definitely have this trait. The second one is I'm pretty good at this trait. The third one is I need to work on this trait. And the fourth one is I definitely need some help on how I can improve this area. The next trait is are you prepared? So are you aware of the circumstances or the situation? Do you understand your audience? And do you know how to prepare or how to report? The third characteristic you see there is communicating well with others. So are you able to speak clearly? Are you able to work with all kinds of people? And are you a good listener? The fourth one is caring. Are you sensitive towards others? Are you accepting of others for who they are? And are you compassionate? The fifth trait there is creativity. Are you able to share your ideas? Can you come up with helpful suggestions? And can you try to brainstorm with new, for new ideas? The sixth one that you see there is problem solving. So this is asking if you're able to handle problems or if you're able to think through difficult times. The seventh one is character. So this is asking if you act in an ethical manner or if you're honest. The eighth trait is adaptability. Are you able to cope and deal with unexpected change and be able to accept it? The ninth trait is dependability. Are you reliable? Can others trust you? And do you make good on your promises? The last trait that we'll reflect on is cooperative. Are you able to work with others, even if you may not get along with them? Moving on to our next activity, we're going to be focusing on the eight W's of project planning. 
as we go through this, there is a handout and it's blank for you to utilize whenever you are working on a project yourself. But for today, I'm gonna go ahead and work through it with you. The first W is what? What are you planning to do? Our example today is gonna to be focusing on an assembly to educate and bring in awareness of the harmful effects of smoking or vaping to your school site. The second W is why and who? Why do you wanna do this project? Well, we want to have a tobacco smoke and vape free campus. Who, who is this going to benefit? This is gonna be benefit all the students on campus because they're gonna be able to live a healthier drug free life. W number three is, is focused on when and where. So when and where will this activity take place? For the sake of this example, we're gonna say that Friday, December 18th of 2020 is going to be when this assembly takes place. And our time is gonna be set to 1.30 p.m. Our fourth W is who. So who needs to approve this project? Who needs to approve our assembly? This may be the principal or even your leadership teacher. It's important that you ask an adult on your campus to know who you need to ask for approval for your projects. The fifth W focuses on what. What funds are needed to do this activity? For this assembly, since it's focused on drug free, I'm thinking that we might need to fundraise about $150 to get really cool bracelets and sunglasses. As far as all the other decorations and the posters, we can do that with using the supplies that are already on school campus. Our sixth W is focusing on what and when. So we're focusing on what kind of publicity is needed and when. So for type of publicity, I'm thinking posters. When is this needed? Wednesday, December 2nd. So this is about two weeks prior to our assembly date. We want to make sure that the posters themselves are completed. And then by Friday, December 4th, we want to make sure that we're able to put our posters up around campus to start advertising. Another type of publicity is announcements. So I'm thinking the week prior to our assembly, we can start daily announcements to again bring that awareness and let the whole campus kind of get excited in anticipation for this assembly. Our seventh W focuses on who. So this is asking who will do the work. This is obviously gonna look different from campus to campus, from activity to activity, but I just wanted to show a quick example. So as you can see on the left, we have a list of tasks that need to be completed. In the center, we have the person who's responsible to complete that task. And on the right hand side, we have that due date for when that task needs to be completed. So the first task is posters. I will go ahead and take the responsibility to get those completed by December 2nd. Our eighth and last W focuses on worthwhile. So at this point in time, we've completed the assembly, we're completely done, and now we're gonna take this time to reflect on our process. So the first question that we need to ask is what went well? So maybe we were great on our timelines. All the tasks that needed to be done were spot on and completed by the due date. The second question that we can ask here is where can we improve or get better? For example, instead of doing the announcements only one week prior to our assembly, maybe we need to start doing those two weeks to get the word out sooner. The last question to reflect on is what can we do differently next time? So I kind of mentioned that a little bit when we were talking about where we could improve, but an example for our assembly is to get those announcements done sooner. And this completes the eight W's to project planning. This resource can be used at any site for any type of project, and you can use what works best for your site so you're able to effectively plan a project. The last topic that we're gonna discuss here today has to do with making decisions. As soon as we wake up, we make the decision to brush our teeth or not what we're gonna have for breakfast, or even what we're gonna wear for that day. We make simple decisions like this often, but it seems like as we get older, the more challenging these decisions can become. This is important to understand when you're in a leadership role, because your decisions may not just affect you, but everyone in the leadership class or even the entire campus. 
So whenever you're faced with making a difficult decision, whether it has to do with your leadership role or even in your personal life, today we're gonna to talk about five steps to work through those challenging decisions. So we'll continue with our example of our assembly. And as we know, I'm in charge of the posters. So my teacher lets me know that I can choose two other students in the class to help me make posters. Step one focuses on identifying my decision. I need to choose which two students are gonna help me with those posters. Step two focuses on brainstorming my options. Option number one is choosing two of my best friends in the class so we're able to hang out and have a good time, even though I know that their artwork isn't the best. Option number two is I can choose two other students in the class that I know their artwork is spot on. Step three focuses on identifying the possible outcomes. If I choose option number one of picking my best friends to help me with this, a possible outcome is we're able to have a great time hanging out while we're working on the posters, but the artwork may not turn out so good. A possible outcome of option number two me choosing those two students that I know their artwork is great. We, I may not be able to have as much fun, but we get the job done and I know that the artwork is gonna turn out exactly as I expected it to. Step number four is making your decision. For me, because this assembly is so important and I'm aware that my decision can affect not only the leadership class, but the entire school who is choosing to participate in our assembly, I'm gonna go with option number two. I'm going to make sure that I pick the two students in the class that I know are spot on with their artwork so I can get the posters done right. Even though I have made my decision, we're still not done. Moving on to step number five, it's really important that we take a moment to reflect on our decisions. Whether the outcome is good or bad, it's important that we do this step so we're able to improve on our skills. For example, let's say that I actually chose option number one. So I chose my best friends to come work with me. Whenever we worked together, we were able to have a great time, but as we mentioned, the artwork wasn't so good. That outcome would be slightly negative. And so something that I need to stop and reflect on is, what could I do differently next time in order to make this different? Obviously, we know that next time I should probably not choose my best friends and instead of hanging out with them while we're working on a leadership project, I should probably hang out with them during breaks or recess or maybe after school. But on the other side of that, we're going with option two, reflecting on that decision, it's a really good one. Everything turned out exactly how I expected. It's still important that I stop to think and reflect on it to remember what I did correctly. When doing this, I'll be able to make those same decisions the next time I'm presented with this option. Again, taking that time to reflect on your decisions really is an opportunity for you to improve your skills on making better decisions in the future. As we know, we make decisions constantly. It's really important that we remember, especially as leaders, that we have a lot of people looking up to us. That's why it's important that we're able to lead by example to show others how to make these healthy and helpful decisions. That completes this leadership lesson. I want to take this time to thank you for participating and being a part of this lesson. I really hope you were able to take this time to reflect on your support systems and your traits as a leader. I'm also hopeful that you were able to understand the importance of organization when it comes to the eight W's of planning a project and when making decisions. Whether you're planning a project or making decisions, it can get very overwhelming, but just taking the time you need to organize your thoughts, assign duties and deadlines, and even taking the time to reflect on those outcomes and to help you in the future. Teachers, as I mentioned in the very beginning of this video, here is the page where you can access those resources. You can see that I've labeled each activity along with a link or a QR code. You can access these resources by utilizing the link or taking a photo of the QR code. I want to thank you all again so much for being a part of today's lesson. I hope that it was beneficial and you're able to utilize these skills that we practice today in the future. I hope everyone has a great rest of their day. Take care.